We are looking at First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. I want to focus on pray for peace and those in authority. And there are several reasons why we should pray and the word kings there you could substitute president or, or governors or whoever is your head of state. And he stated, Paul stated that you have to do this for selfish reasons. It's for your own good. To pray for them. Because you know that your president can declare war on another nation, mm. he will not fight. Mm. It's your children, your brothers, your sisters who will go to the battlefront. sit down in his office, declare war on another nation, and many homes will suffer loss as a result of his decision. Is that scriptural? Well, in First Chronicles chapter 21, First Chronicles chapter 21, from verse 1 to 14, David conducted the census of Israel. What he did displeased God. As a result, 70,000 people died. Not one member of the household of David died. It was David who sinned. It was the followers, the members of the nation that paid the price. In First Kings chapter 17, from verse 1 to 16, First Kings 17, from verse 1 to 16, it was Ahab and his wife that led Israel into idolatry. When the punishment came, it was a nation that had to do without rain for more than three years. But for the intervention of God, the widow of Zarephath and her son would have died. Definitely the widow was a godly woman who was willing to even give her last meal to the servant of God. But regardless of that, because the king and his wife offended God, she would have perished with her son. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, the old chapter, a king had a dream. He woke up the following day and had forgotten the dream. He issued a decree if the wise man will not tell me my dream and the interpretation thereof, you are dead. So the king was sleeping in his house and you are sleeping in your house. He had a dream which he forgot and but for the intervention of God the wise man would have died because a king dreamed. In 
Daniel chapter 3, the whole chapter, Daniel chapter 3. A king had a crazy idea. Let me raise up an idol and use my power to compel everybody to worship that idol. Anyone who refuses to worship my idol will be thrown into the very furnace. But for God's intervention, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, We can only serve God, the living God. But for divine intervention, those boys were roasted. And as the king have uh, the ability to affect your destiny, you better believe it. King uh, can knock you down sooner. There are many people who earn their daily living day by day. For weeks now they have not earned anything. Oh yes, we know so for our protection. But the order comes from above. Sit down at home and everybody must obey. Pray for kings. And then the question comes, what if the king or president or governor is a wicked man? Are we still supposed to pray for him? Can't we pray, for example, that God should change our leader? You are free to pray any prayer you like. The question is, if you ask for change, how are you sure that the replacement will be better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Haven't we seen changes that we wish that we had stayed with the original? Mm -hmm. Is it not better, considering the fact that the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1, Proverbs 21 verse 1, that the king's heart is in the heart of the Almighty God, and it can turn the heart like rivers of water. Can't we pray and commit the heart of our leaders? into the hand of the living world. Isn't it written in Matthew 12 verse 33, Matthew 12 verse 33, that if you make a tree good, his fruit shall be good? Is there any precedent that the Almighty God cannot change? There's no one created by the Almighty God that the Almighty God cannot control. Pray for your king. Pray for the king's advisors, the ministers, the commissioners, the secretary to the government, etc., etc. Because when you read Daniel chapter 6, you can read the whole chapter. Daniel chapter 6. The king was good. He loved Daniel. But the advisors maneuvered him to throw Daniel into the den of lions. Most of the decisions taken by presidents and governors are as a result of the advisors, result of the ministers and counselors and commissioners. 
pray for the advisors. Pray for your boss, your immediate boss. Because he who influence your promotion, he who influence your future. I've always wondered what exactly is going on when I read Second Kings chapter two, verse one to eight. Second Kings two, verse one to eight. When Elijah kept on saying to Elisha, wait here, I'm going somewhere else, wait here, wait here, three times. I know Bible, calls, Bible scholars say he was just trying to test his loyalty. Uh, maybe because I am a small boy, I'm just a beginner. If somebody left his parents, left his business, never went back home to greet the parents, and have been following me for more than three years, pouring water on my hands, I should think I already know this fellow's lawyer. I'm yet to know the full meaning of Elijah saying, wait here, wait here. Suppose Elijah had said, this is my boss. I've never disobeyed him before. Is the one asking me to wait. In obedience, I will wait. What would have happened to the destiny of Elijah? Pray for your boss. And when you read 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 8 to 17, <laughs> it was Elijah that was troubling the king of Syria. But when the king of Syria sent an army to go and arrest him, <laughs> the servant of the man of God was included in the trouble. Because when, he, when the servant of the man of God came out and saw the army surrounding them, he said, my master, what shall we Thank God that the boss has enough power, had enough power to arrest the arresters. But just consider the problem of your boss can rope you in. Pray for your pastors. That's one thing many of us don't do. We want them to pray for us, pray for our healing, pray for our business, pray for our promotion, pray for our family. When do you pray for him? Have you forgotten that it is written? Matthew 26 verse 31. Matthew 26 verse 31. You smite the shepherd and the flock will be scattered. Do you think the devil is um, interested in your congregation as much as he's in you, the pastor? If he can just get the pastor, then the rest of you are in trouble. Pray for your pastors. So that the Spirit of God will not depart from him. When you read the story of Samson in Judges chapter 16 from verse 18 to the end, Judges 16 from verse 18 to the end, 
<sighs> when this man was uh, sleeping and he thought he was still anointed, I woke up to discover that the anointing was gone. How many pastors are there who are still preaching? Gesculating, sweating, doing all manners of gymnastics, and God is already gone. How many pastors who used to be highly anointed are still making the motions? Because they know what to say, they know what to make you jump and clap. And, and yet, the anointing is gone. A few notices that pastors, many pastors, who used to preach, that after the preaching you re examine your life. Am I closer to God? Am I still on the narrow way? But now, everything is almost entertainment. When was the last time you went to church and you came home sober? Pray for your pastors. Pray for your pastors because if you take a close look at several congregations, you will see how bad things have become. When you see that comedians are now invited to entertain the people during church services. Because all the pastors want to do is just make you happy. Paul was saying that he wrote to some people and that his letter made them sad. He said, I apologize. He said, but I don't apologize. He said, because godly sorrow will get repentance not to be repented of. Pray for your pastors. Paul said again and again and again, brethren, pray for us. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25. First Thessalonians 5, 25. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Hebrews 13, verse 18. Hebrews 13, verse 18. He kept on saying, Pray for us. Have you considered the story in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12? We can read it from the beginning to the end. Acts 12, from verse 1 to the end. A king arrested a leader of the church and killed him. And then when he saw that that pleased the enemy, he grabbed Peter also. And then the Bible now said the church began to pray intensely for Peter. They did not pray for Andrew. Or uh, James. James. James, rather. They didn't pray for James. So James died. But they prayed for Peter. And an angel came 
and rescued Peter. Pray for your leaders. Every leader needs help. No matter how anointed. As long as he still in this body of clay, he has needs. Let's take one or two examples. Let's start with Exodus chapter 17 from verse 8 to 13. Exodus 17, 8 to 13. The Amalekites came and they attacked the children of Israel. And Moses was highly anointed. He sat on the man on the hilltop, told Joshua to be fighting below, threw Canaan and bow with him to the mountain top and started controlling the battery from the hilltop. Just by raising his hands to God. That he was a man. After his while, after a while, he got tired, and his hand was going down. And as his hands were going down, the battle changed. Aaron and Paul saw what happened, and they did some interesting things. First, they gave Moses something to sit on. You better make the leader comfortable. His son can guide the battles of the life. And then, they stood one on his side and raised up his hand. Why didn't they say, hands are hands? He has only two hands. Between the two of us, we have four hands. If he start and let him sit down, we will lift up our own four hands. <laughs> the battle would have been lost. But Moses needed help. If he had not been helped that day, there would be no nation of Israel today. That's one example. Let's take the example of Elijah. Mighty man of God. I mean, this man was anointed. Brought down fire from heaven. Shut the heavens just by say so. Prayed and rain fell. Outran a chariot of, of the king. But when you read First King chapter 19 from verse 1 to 8, First King 19 from verse 1 to 8. After running the race from Mount Camel to Jezreel, he was automatically tired. He was sick, man. And then, because he was tired, when he had the challenge from a woman, he ran. By the time he got to uh, the place where he had been running for some time, and he couldn't even run anymore, he said, God, why don't you just kill me instead of allowing this woman to do it? Mm. Who could ever think that a man of the caliber of Elijah who contemplates suicide? Mm. Mm. Pray for your leaders. They need help. Let me give you the biggest example of all. 
in Matthew 26 from verse 37 to 40 Matthew 26 from verse 37 to 40 the Lord Jesus himself that's the captain of our salvation that's God who became it. when the crisis came he begged Peter, James and John watch with me when he came back and found them sleeping he said ah, at least for one hour one hour it is for your own good <clears throat> that you should pray for kings Pray for the king's advisors. Pray for your boss. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. Because if it's well with them, it will be well with you. May God give you the grace to do that as you pray for yourself. At least, even if it's only for two or three minutes a day, remember to pray for those who are in authority over you. That's how you can live a peaceable life. That's how you can be guided in your journey to heaven. May you succeed finally in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Bubu awon ti o si da to le wa lara won eyin na le ni te ba so gidire isura dire baba e ba wa so won dire re Amen Olorun alaafia e fun wa lalaafia Amen e sa nu orilede wa o Amen e sa nu ijo yin o Amen e sa nu gbogbo wa o Amen e sa nu agbaye o Amen e jo e dawo bi duro o Amen kale ma yin titi Amen Father, we want to say thank you very much for your word. We want to thank you because we know you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. We know you can control the heart of all the presidents, all the heads of states, all the governors. And we are committing them into your hands, Lord. We pray that they will rule us with the fear of God. Amen. We pray that they will not lead us astray. Amen. We are asking, Lord God Almighty, that you can make a tree good and the fruit will become good. both physical and spiritual into your hands because of the numerous sheep Lord God Almighty that will be affected if the shepherds were to be smitten we ask Lord that you make all shepherds good in Jesus name Amen. have mercy on the old world Lord Amen. and put an end to this call Amen. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.